So those are the four pieces, the consoles, vMixer we call them, the personal mixing, the digital snake, and the recording. Let's just take a quick look at each one of those a little bit deeper. So there's React. That's the foundation upon which everything's built. That's the key. That's the, that's the, the building, uh, yeah, the, the actual concrete foundation. Then we have, uh, let's talk about the snakes. We basically have uh, three different snake heads uh, series. This is the S4000 which is, uh, can handle 40 uh, sources. And they can be configured in groups of, uh, of four. So right, what you see here is a 32 by eight. And you can see card slots there. You can use digital or analog input or output modules. You slide in, you make a 2416, you can do a 40 by zero, 32 by eight as you see here. Uh, if you wanted to do a point to point snake, you would just have one of these and they are just mirrored the other way. Uh, one 32 by eight and the other is a eight by 32. And uh, that's just like a normal snake that you'd get point to point. Uh, we have a 16 by eight uh, snake system. Again, very handy, uh, not modular, so it comes at a lower cost, uh, but you get a nice 16 by eight point to point solution. And then we have an 8x8, eight eight, a nice little box that can actually run on battery or it can run on uh, power over Ethernet. So from that switch you see that runs the M48s, it can actually be powered by that. Here's a little uh, example of how it's sometimes used uh, in location sound where you just need to get in, input and output from one spot to another. You're going to a live recorder and uh, it's all out in the field perhaps. So very handy way, or even on a stage like this or on a larger stage where you just wanna throw a, an input box there. You don't have AC out there, it's not very handy. You can just throw the box on there and the box has enough power running to it over Cat5 to handle up to eight fully phantom powered in inputs. So it's a great little box uh, for, those, for those drops, so to speak. Those, uh, the snake part alone even is being used all over the world. You can see it, some very high-end names there are the uh, number of the past Olympics, um, Super Bowls, uh, BBC over in the UK, all around Europe, as well as the installation and production. And the number one reason people like it is sound quality, is that conversion, those preamps that take the analog signal, convert it to a digital signal, it's just, very good, very low noise floor, um, great headroom. So that's uh, what people enjoy in Europe and around the world. In fact, the, the Vatican, with a lot of the papal visits around the world now, um, they take a snake system and a console system, um, and that's worldwide now. It, and that's some big portable setups. They're, they're usually to a few million people. Man, the delays that run sometimes for a mile. Uh, the rigs, they basically clean a few countries out of all of their uh, array systems uh, to, to do some of their events. So anyway, they're using uh, a lot of the snake products there, usually with fiber to run the distances. So there's a snake, point to point. Now what's great, um, you can use that with an analog console. So if you currently have or your clients have an analog mixer, they're still using and love and can't afford to or don't want to yet move to a digital board, you can use this as a point-to-point -point snake and we have a number of places that do that. But, of course, the way to move forward is to connect a console at the other end instead of the breakout of the snake. And that's where you get into our consoles. We're gonna spend time in a few moments just going through this console, but we've got three choices for you right now. The M480, 48-channel uh, console, uh, some of its highlights are the fact that it's actually 60 channels of, because there's six stereo returns in there that take it up to 60. Lots of busing, lots of input output, uh, great dynamics, EQ selection on each channel, all the power you're gonna need in 90% of the situations. Lots of effects, power, uh, we got built-in recording, and if you get larger events from time to time, you can put two consoles together and uh, go to 96, and it actually is very integrated, works very well. Um, the 380, some of you might not have seen this, it doesn't have as much uh, face time, but it's being used in a lot of great little applications because it's really the world's most compact 48 channel rack mountable 
digital console. So it's on 16 faders on four levels, on four layers. Um, and you get the right case, you put in the case. We've, we have a company that's made some cases and you can uh, get that case and the console in at under 50 pounds. And we have clients that are take it around the world, travel to Europe, do wherever they need to do their um, work and not have to rent consoles at the end because they can check it as baggage on the plane without penalty. So um, 380 is great for those, uh, those portable applications. And then the 300, we've got a couple of those here today as well. Great for the 32 channel market, which is great for uh, smaller bands, uh, or even, it doesn't even matter the size of church, it's usually how big is the band? How many inputs do you need? How many inputs are you using? And 32 channels, again, rack mountable, great. Uh, awesome, especially for portable churches as well. Not that the M480 is that big either, but uh, it's just that a little bit more compact. So that's our console world and, and that's being used in a lot of places um, right from stadiums like uh, Ford Field in Detroit to again radio uh, theater in, in London. Uh, we, can, we can pull out a lot of users um, over, over the last few years that we've run. So the back you can see we're going to look at this in a moment in a bit more detail but it has local I.O. as well as those React ports. You can see three because you get the A and the B and then a split port. And the split port is great because it allows you to run, for example, to recording or run to a whole nother output split to broadcast, for example. So that's like an extra switch there on the back. You get full RS-232 on all of our consoles. So if you're an integrator and you want to put a touch panel on the wall and you want to control it and, and maybe your principal or your pastor, whoever it might be, needs to do weddings, you can just put scenes right on the touch panel and control it back to the, to the console and just have it set for wedding, set for baptism, set for whatever they need to. And, and uh, not every console, certainly the smaller consoles too, most of them don't come with RS-232. So it's a very handy feature there that you can add value as um, a contractor and designer. And lots of other great input and output there on the back. So what's great about it is you go from this type of a setup where everything's jammed into the back and it's really a rat's nest and that's probably only about 32 channels, uh, you, go, you can move to that and that can handle 90 by 90, a much cleaner, uh, not only cleaner sounding, that's, that's fraught, the previous one is fraught with noise and interference um, from the elements. This is gonna give you a clean looking and a clean sounding uh, system. So with the two ports, we're able to put two snakes out there and onto our console and we've got lots of I.O. that's ready to go. Personal mixing, as I near the end here, this is the component that allows you to, as a musician, uh, hear what you need to hear. And we've made it unique in that we can actually, that little box sitting in front of you sees 40 sources. It's like a 40 channel mixer sitting in front of you that actually allows each unit to control up to 16 stereo groups. So each one of those uh, orange boxes represent a different M48. So they're all seeing the same 40 sources and they can look at up to 16 groupings of that in whatever they, way they want. And this afternoon we're gonna show you how you can configure the system to be, have completely different setups per M48. And that's what you usually want as a musician. The drummer wants to hear something different than a background vocalist. And so we see example of that. Someone who doesn't play very much, they can have their setup very simple, just four groups there. It's me, because I'm playing piano today, there's the lead vocal, then the whole band is on one knob and the whole vocal and choir area is on another knob. But, very same system, I can take, as a drummer, I can spread my whole drum kit out to eight groups. I got kick, snare, toms, everything laid out and I'm in heaven because now I have full control of what I hear as a drummer and I've always been frustrated with that because I only, you know, especially if you're using personal mixing, you, everyone's got to you know, be on the same party line and uh, you're stuck with trying to find the common 
uh, denominator across everyone who's playing um, this way you can be very selfish and uh, do whatever you want it's truly a personal mixer per person and we're going to show you how to do that so now you can uh, get quite quite a different uh, array of setups so lots of control nice built-in ambient mic and what uh, Sonny will tell you tonight is just how the how the mixers work with musicians there's some novices that come in, learn how to do it uh, very quickly, and some pros that come in and just love the fact that they can tweak like crazy and get the perfect mix. Uh, it, it, it caters to both the novice and the pro. And we're, we're going to talk about this later this afternoon. So configuring in a system, you just uh, connect it like I've shown before to a switch and they all pop up automatically right on your screen uh, ready to configure. So all plug and play. Uh, no funny mapping and setting things up like a network. It's all, it's all handled automatically. The last uh, building block then is the playback and the record part. There's really two ways to do it. One is using Cakewalk, sonar producer version, a network cable out of a switch or out of the back of the console right into your PC, network port, 40 channels pop up ready to record live. So you can live track to your PC uh, anytime you want just for uh, using sonar. Uh, we have a driver, a React driver for the PC there that's ready to go. That is uh, free for anyone who want, uh, has a console. Uh, the other uh, piece is the R1000 and it's a 48 track player and recorder. And what's unique about it is that it can do uh, a lot of things because you can stick it in line between the snake heads. So this is this picture here, where on the way to the snakes, I stick an R1000. And when I do that, uh, the system doesn't need to know whether it's coming live or whether it's coming from the track. So I can arm tracks and not arm tracks and play back and record and do a number of things all at the same time. So a few examples of this we're gonna see in a few moments where you can record what you're doing every Sunday and play back right in a rehearsal. Play back, uh, record, and then play back right away. Again, we'll hear some anecdotal stuff from Sunny tonight in terms of what this, what this particular church does and how they can use it. At the same time, um, it's a great recorder. You can take those files it's WAV files and open up in any program you want. Pro Tools, Cakewalk, Sonar, uh, Steinberg, you name it. And everyone can look at WAV files. So uh, go in and edit it uh, as just in a recording. But we find the value comes very strongly in the playback. And to be able to just stop, hit record, sorry, start to play, hit record, Band stops, hit play again, and everything you just did comes through the system exactly the way it happened because it's all in line. So all your gates, your EQs, uh, compressors, effects, everything you have is just as if that person is still singing through that mic through the same system because it's all in line. Very unique piece, and we're going to explore that in a moment. 